Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the studio. Things have changed a lot very quickly, not only here in, in, in Italy it seems, but, but all over the world. Now this video was filmed in the opening days of the lockdown that's in effect because of COVID-19. When we learned we had to stay at home for a month or however long it ends up being and avoid travel unless necessary. That means no trips to the studio of course. My sculptures are made out of water-based clay and they need moisture to not dry up and crack. So I had to come in and spray my massive and, and heavy sculpture and, and wrap it up very well to make sure it could survive a month or two without me being there. However, however long this lockdown ends up lasting really. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. But instead of simply talking about everything I'm doing in this video that you can already see on screen, I'll talk a little bit about what it's like over here in Italy at the moment, how we're dealing with the lockdown here in Florence, and how I keep cabin fever at bay, etc. So if I remember correctly, this is week three of the quarantine or, or lockdown. And just to paint a picture for you on how the lockdown works over here. Now I might get some details wrong, things change pretty quickly. But this is kind of the gist of it, let's say. We're asked to stay home as much as possible and, and limit all unnecessary travel. This means that unless your work is considered essential, you're not supposed to go to work. You're supposed to work from home. Exactly what constitutes essential work, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure that making clay sculpture is not considered very essential, even here in Italy. Travel for medical purposes or shopping for food is allowed, but you have to have a piece of paper with you stating the intent of your travel. Now I assume that if you go to a, a supermarket that's not in your neighborhood, for example, you can get in trouble because on the, on the paper you need to bring with you, it needs to say where you live, etc. However, I haven't seen anyone getting stopped and I haven't personally been stopped while outside myself. But the streets are fairly empty except for in the vicinity of supermarkets. So, at least from the looks of it, here in my neighborhood, it seems that people are complying with, uh, with the rules the government have set. You are allowed to go for walks in your own neighborhood, but you have to practice social distancing, which is six feet or two meters away from, from other people. When people stand in line outside the supermarkets to get in, they are, they are standing far apart, they're standing two meters apart. There are only a certain amount of people allowed into the supermarket or any store, not that there's any store open, but it's usually the supermarket. There's only a certain amount of people allowed in at once. And there is someone at the door, a supermarket employee, making sure that these rules are followed. So they see a person leave and then they let another person go into the store. And again, people seem to be following these rules without any fuss, standing in line for sometimes up to an hour to get into the supermarket. And all in all, the mood seems to be pretty good. People are taking this fairly well, I'd say. Of course, Florence, where I live, is not the hardest hit area at, at the moment. Things might be very different in other places in the Italy. Florence is also fairly, a fairly rich area of, of Italy, and so... I can't speak for other areas of Italy, but right here, it just seems empty and quiet. It's almost like the city has gone into hibernation. Of course, there are no tourists anymore. They disappeared pretty much right away as this thing started. And, and the city, the few times I have been out, the city is virtually empty. No stores are really open unless the store is essential, like supermarkets with food and, and pharmacies for medicines. No cafes are open, no restaurants are open. So it's pretty eerie compared to what things are usually like around here. One of my local supermarkets, a co-op, has hand sanitizer and gloves at the entrance. So people that are entering the store clean their hands with hand sanitizer and they use gloves while in the store which I think is a very good practice and, and hopefully more places do that. Overall, I think one of the more tricky things about this lockdown is really staying in your house and, and having little to nothing to do. Now, without a schedule and a bit of structure in my life, I tend to struggle keeping any productivity going. 
I'm fairly, it's fairly easy for me to stay disciplined when there, there is some sense of purpose outside of myself, like a place to go to work or, or a team that relies on, on my performance. But without that, I find it very hard to stay on schedule. I guess I'm lacking in self-discipline. And I find the very same thing happens during the summer break. As a teacher, we have long summer breaks, usually two months. And during these two months, I find staying motivated and working uh, very, very hard. And this lockdown is panning out pretty much the same way, except everything else you can fill your days with during the summer, like travel or, or doing other sorts of things, doesn't really apply this time around. If you are a regular viewer of the channel or a Patreon supporter, what does all this mean for, for my content creation for this channel and, and for you? Well, it means I can't really create new videos because I'm slowly running out of footage to create videos of. I certainly wasn't planning for something like this, and I hadn't built up a big enough library of footage that I could make videos of. It doesn't seem that anybody at any level in society planned really, really well for this. So th that's something that I might have to change and adjust for in the future in the event that something like this or, or something similar happens again, and so that I have footage ready to go for a few barren months where I can't go to the studio and film. At the moment, nobody really knows how long this lockdown will end up lasting. I believe the official word at the moment of release of this video is April 15th or so, but I assume that date is fluid and will change depending on how the situation is as we approach that date. I've heard some people say that early May things will begin going back to normal and some people think that this will continue into or perhaps even over the summer. Now, at the moment, it's very hard to say with any confidence when we can resume our normal lives. I do have footage for a few YouTube videos, so for at least a few more weeks, I should be able to continue putting out weekly videos. However, for the Patreon exclusive video series, I don't have any more footage and I can't in good conscience sneak into the studio to, to make more. And I think the best solution is to double the amount of videos each month once the lockdown is over until I catch up. There's nothing I can really do other than apologize for now and, and give you more videos later. But as I'm sure you can understand, all of this is outside of my control. For the regular YouTube viewer, I might do some reruns of older episodes that perhaps few of you have seen. A lot of you are new subscribers here, and if I'm not mistaken, there's over a hundred videos on the channel at the moment. So I'll probably try and mix some reruns in here and there, along with some new videos, so I can stick with the weekly upload schedule as long as possible. And hopefully this whole thing will wind down sooner rather than later, so we can go back to living our normal lives. As far as what's happening on the screen, what the footage is showing, I might as well take a minute or two to talk about it, I think. There's a few things I'm doing differently than what I would normally do when wrapping a piece like this up. The first thing is that I'm using multiple layers of plastic. First, I laid down a bunch of plastic bags and I made sure to tie them down so that they can't move around, flop around, fall off. Especially around the bottom of the legs, this is important as I want a good seal as possible around all the clay to minimize, minimize the amount of air that can, that can enter and, and dry out the clay. Of course, I sprayed the sculpture several times and I also sprayed the bags where the overlap of bags are and this really helps the bags kind of stick together. I'm no scientist, but perhaps it has something to do with water retention or, or at least something similar that helps hold the plastic to the clay and the, and the plastic to the, to the other pieces of plastic. Now spraying the surface of the plastic also means that I'll end up with a very moist environment, which is very good. Perhaps some of the water vapor helps the clay from drying out. Now because of the second layer of plastic wrapped on top of the plastic bags, I can get kind of a greenhouse effect inside the multiple layers of plastic. Retaining moisture for longer means I'll have to travel less to the studio, which is good at times like this, to spray and readdress the sculpture. 
and, and traveling less at the moment is certainly preferable. The red bands you see me using to tie the plastic in place is from the green plastic bags that I started out applying. Those red bands are attached to the bottom of the plastic bags. I'm not really sure what they're for, but I tear them off and I use them to, to hold the plastic down close to the surface of the clay. And I'm doing this to make sure that the amount of air between my sculpture and the plastic is as minimal as possible. Okay, I know today was a bit of a shorter video. Next week, we'll do something a little bit more normal, perhaps, like we used to do before the, uh, before the world got turned upside down on us. In the meantime, take, take COVID-19 seriously. Do your part, practice social distancing, follow the rules and guidelines provided to you from your government, and, and wash your hands. Stay safe, everyone. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.